The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 807 A Brief Roommate Debriefing Slipstream felt the tension slowly drain from her body as she spread out on the bed Granada had salvaged and repaired, letting her wings loose and regretting the fact that her hooves would have to be used tomorrow. For now, at least she could pretend that wasn't the case, her body ready to fall asleep, but her mind to a buzz with the day's drama and events to even consider it. Oh, hello, Felicity said, appearing in the doorway with a surprised look on her face. Darling, uh, I did ask Renata to set that bed up specifically for me, but you also look like you need it, and I suppose I don't mind sharing. Slipstream blinked and rolled over. Sharing the bed? Granada said roommates. She lifted her head, looking around, and quickly realized there was only one bed, and this was what Granada had meant. Oh, well, sure. I hope that doesn't make you uncomfortable, Felicity apologized, lifting a hesitant hoof. I really don't mind, I just am not in the greatest condition, and... I suppose it'll be an experience, Slipstream decided, rolling further to the side. Felicity was bigger than she was, and even though the mare had traveled with them for some time in Mistvale, she hadn't been incredibly open or present. And, of course, it had been impossible to miss Felice's talks and explanations about what Felicity had done at Stormhoof. This was a mare she wasn't as at ease around as the other crew members. But she was also helping everyone injured from the battle, and so she stayed and decided to give Felicity a chance. Felicity collapsed onto the bed with a sigh, rolling onto her back and giving Slipstream her space as well. Oh, I've been on my hoofs for hours, darling, but I think everyone's going to make it through the night. Maple and Meltdown are awake, I've jury-rigged a splint that will... Hopefully, get Saffron's leg healing in the right direction. Gerardo's issues are apparently well documented, and Gazelle is... not completely lucid. I have to say, I planned on approaching you all and helping out, but this isn't what I had in mind at all. Tired? Slipstream asked. I know how that feels. Felicity appraised her without turning her head. If I can be frank, you look absolutely beaten... Hard work around the ship? Slipstream shook her head, the day's excitement and terror far more pressing than her concerns about Felicity, who was presently being a pleasant conversationalist. I took the fillies and went scouting. If we're stranded here, I figured it wouldn't hurt to know just what here is like. Oh? Felicity slumped in the bed, sinking into it as hard as Slipstream felt like she was doing herself. A useful endeavor find out anything worth finding? Lots, actually. Slipstream rolled over again so she could face the mare. We followed the coast for a while and found what looks like civilization, though it's at least two days long march from here, maybe longer since I flew over some difficult terrain. Between rivers and hills with tall grasses, this area will be almost impossible to traverse by hoof. Felicity sighed, giving her wings a flap. Well, don't count on me for that, darling. You know how I am with endurance runs. Slipstream didn't, but she didn't press. There's a wrecked airship a ways east of here that could be interesting to explore, and I think I saw a forest beyond that if we need wood or certain plants. We never saw anyone flying, or even anyone at all, so we're going to have to just take what we can find and help ourselves. We are alone out here, Granada's voice cut in. She appeared in the doorway, several sturdy trays heaped with slightly bruised fruit floating in her aura. That is good to know, at least. Here, the stallions in the kitchen say this needs to be consumed first, or it will go bad. Slipstream's stomach growled audibly at the sight of food, and she found herself still possessing the strength after all to sit up, take a tray, and dig in. Several pieces of fruit later, she prepared to dig into another, only to have Granada climb into the bed with them. Three of us? She put down the fruit that was to be her next morsel. This is getting kind of crowded. 
I would rather share than sleep on the floor, Granada replied, as if it was an obvious logical deduction. Is this a problem? Uh, Felicity daintily nibbled on a pear. I'm not the one who would have issues, though with us at this close of quarters, uh, how awkward would it make things if I accidentally cuddled in my sleep? I may not be very used to shared bunking that's both platonic and not with close family. Granada tensed slightly. Are you asking to be in a relationship? Felicity waved a hoof. Oh, hardly, darling. Just giving a sensible warning. Then I do not mind. Granada settled down between them, making herself comfortable. As long as there are no pretenses or false hopes. Slipstream sucked on a pear of her own, taking care not to dribble pear juice on the bed. What did we even just start talking about? False pretenses and platonic cuddling? I might have missed something. Felicity blinked at her. We're free mares sharing a bed, darling, and by circumstance, a necessity rather than choice. At times like this, making sure everyone's on the same page and has had a chance to lay out their own ground rules really is a wise caution. Ground rules? Slipstream furred her brow. We're all mares. What does... A memory of Riverfall she had tried to put behind her surfaced in her mind, and she reddened. Oh. Felicity put her head back down. Ah, well, I suppose that answers that. No, sorry, just an awkward memory. Uh, Slipstream sank, embarrassed. I've always been more of a stallion's mare, you know. Or griffins, which I can say, now that we're out of the Empire... Felicity eyed her suspiciously, then gave a disarming smile. An awkward memory? Sounds like an excellent icebreaker, should you ever need one, darling. But fear not, I won't press. So, you were telling me about your scouting trip, no? Everything you found, and the difficulties of traveling? Granada was still busy eating fruit. I would like to hear this. Right. Slipstream saw the out and took it. The important part is that the terrain is awful, and we won't be able to make it through these hills on Huff. If we make it to the shore, there's a long road, but that's still a ways. So anywhere we go is going to need flyers, or ponies who can be carried. Uh, Felicity's ears fell. Bad news on that front, I'm afraid. Gerardo is paralyzed, Gazelle is catatonic, Niala needs rehabilitation, and I can't guarantee Shinespark's horn will ever work again. That means you'll have to work with Harshwater and how, and as much as I have no standing to see this, the latter isn't trustworthy at all. And Harshwater's probably going to be busy. Uh, slipstream showed off her aching wings, the appendages rebelling even at being lifted. I guess that means it's going to fall to me, and I just got a bad reminder of how out of shape I am. I might not even be ready to fly again for two or three days. Granada kept munching as Felicity sighed apologetically. Well, that's no fun. Fortunately, if we're going to be here a while, that means you'll have plenty of practice and get your endurance up. Ever done an exercise routine? Mm, a slipstream nostalgically rolled her eyes. Only in school, when having the flattest belly and tightest flanks were how you got popular and scored dates. Funny how that transitions importantly into the real world, only for a completely different reason. And I just spent months laying around and not keeping up and let myself go to seed. She stared down at herself and huffed. Felicity leaned over across Granada, inspected her proportions, and frowned. Darling, if that's what you call going to seed, then pray tell what am I? Slipstream had walked into a loaded question and she knew it. Naturally endowed, you make the less flatness look good. Then call yourself the same. Felicity pooped her with a wingtip. Take it from a seasoned professional. If you care about looking good, your body is fine. Body image and how it lets you carry yourself is what everyone is actually looking for, and the ones who aren't are good for a throwaway date and nothing more. Though, I think trying to improve your flying stamina and recovery time for the good of everyone here is a far more attractive goal than anything else you've put on the table. Everyone likes a mare who is motivated to improve for the sake of others. A slipstream blinked. Thanks? Felicity drew back to her side of the bed with a saucy wink. 
You do you, darling. Granada nudged Felicity with her telekinesis. She said earlier she was not interested in other mares. There is no need to flirt. But darling, I've had a long and stressful day, and this is how I relax. I think we all have, Slipstream replied. And honestly, I don't mind. It almost reminds me of my school days with my old friends, teasing each other about what cults we liked. Except, now I'm wondering if you like me, which is a little weird, but not weird enough to make this not feel like some badly needed normal. She sighed, closed her eyes, and smiled. So, now that I think about it, keep it up, girl. Granada shrugged, crawling out of the bed, and pushing Felicity to the center before getting back in where the bat pony used to be, no longer in a position where she had to be reached over. Felicity laid on her side, propping her cheek on one forehoof and fluttering her eyelashes at Slipstream. In that case, tell me more about my good-looking, less flatness you saw. Uh, um, Slipstream's ears fell. On second thoughts, Maybe I should mention that the time I got introduced to the idea of fillies being a little more interested in each other happened to be in a city where all the population, including my hosts, were susceptible to mob mentality and wound up vandalizing Maple's house, and I got beaten pretty badly trying to defend it for her. Felicity blinked hard and deflated, her saucy demeanor disappearing. Well... I can't say I saw that coming. Sorry, Slipstream insisted. Like I said, it wasn't a memory I do a lot to focus on. And looking back, I stepped in and tried to make a difference, so even if I failed, I'm sort of proud of it, but it's still just a weird memory and... Sorry for making this awkward. Felicity bit her lip. Sorry, darling. I... Would a hug be the right or wrong thing to offer here? Slipstream blinked. Um... Felicity? Granada rolled over and lifted her head. If there is something you want from us, you can just ask instead of trying to make us ask so it sounds like it is our idea. You're better at reading ponies than I give you credit for, Felicity sighed. Or perhaps I'm just that obvious. If it wouldn't be awkward, she reached hesitantly for a hug. Slipstream bit her lap. Stressful day for you too, huh? Tell me about it. Felicity looked down. I haven't exactly told anyone, but my sisters and I had a falling out over how to handle you all in the aftermath of our choices with Stormhoff. Narsany regretted our choice, wished we had chosen differently, gave you her apology, and wanted to wash her hooves of the whole affair and start anew elsewhere. Senesi and I felt poorly about how we had treated you, but agreed that if we had to do it all over again, we'd make the same choice that final night. That you could only be our first priority after our ambitions in the Empire were taken off the list. Long story short, we had a talk that turned into an argument and then a fight, and I changed my mind and was won over by larceny while Senesei... didn't. Sibling disagreements are difficult, aren't they, Granada mused quietly, as is finding yourselves ideologically opposed. Felicity thumbed her head back against the pillow. But then Larceny wanted to go off and start anew, and I wanted to come back and actually try to properly apologize and see if I couldn't maybe work my way into a second or third or whatever it is chance, because maybe it would be possible and she had just made me want it and I never apologized properly the last time, and maybe, possibly, I had a tiny crush on Valet as well. Had. Unfortunately, Slipstream winced. And now she's... whatever happened to her, and your sisters likely are too? Yes, Felicity sighed. And instead of trying to help out around your ship a little as a peace offering, I wound up getting carried along on a dizzying airship ride and suddenly having the full extent of my skills needed to keep half of your friends from dying, some of whom likely trust me little enough to refuse service if they were conscious. Bad, on top of worse, on top of terrible. And to cap it all off with a problem that probably sounds terribly silly, the way I relax and unwind is with physical closeness. And now we're stuck with just a few of us in the middle of nowhere with no other ponies around, 
And by the time we're able to get back to civilization, even without Gashiva's heresies to skirt around, I have three and a half months of fold that are about to start showing, and likely make me that much less alluring. Lumping an issue like that in with my sisters likely being dead, it just makes me feel fabulous. So, Slipstream hesitated, you really would like a hug. Yes, I think I'd appreciate that a lot. End of chapter 807